Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be talking and focusing on Egypt's economic and political developments. In light of the, uh, the end of the parliamentary elections, now Egypt is slated and waiting for the first parliament in a couple of years. We're also going to be focusing as well on the $8 billion that will be loaned by the World Bank to Egypt and the prospects of actually using these $8 billion. Also, the tourism industry is under the focus with the efforts exerted by the Ministry of Tourism. And joining us here in the studio to shed more light on these issues is Dr. Ehsan Yahya, member of the Higher Institute of Legal and Political Studies and the Political Analyst. Dr. Yahya, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, first off, before we start our discussion, let's check out this report regarding the World Bank giving Egypt $8 billion in total over the coming period. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. The International Cooperation Minister Sahar Nasr announced that the World Bank had agreed on a new $5 billion loan package to Egypt during an event where Prime Minister Sharif Ismail signed for the first tranche of the $3 billion to the country. According to the minister, the World Bank will loan Egypt $8 billion overall in a series of payments. During a press conference, Nasr said the money will also be used to develop some areas such as Port Said and Sinai Peninsula, as well as upgrade the sanitation system and housing of low-income people. The minister said the breakdown of the new package loan will be as follows. $3 billion will be allocated for implementing projects in marginalized areas, as well as establishing industrial zones in Port Said and the Suez Canal area whilst the remaining $2 billion will be granted from the International Finance Corporation, which seeks to support private sector growth. She said the first tranche of the loan amounting to $1 billion would be delivered to Egypt before the year's end, whilst the remaining amounts would be dispersed over the next three years. Nasser did not provide an exact date for the signing of the remaining amount of money in the loan package. Earlier this week, she revealed that the $3 billion loan had a maturity life of 35 years, and carried an annual interest rate of 1.68% with a grace period five years. The loan would help the government secure economic growth and provide much-needed foreign currency liquidity to help offset the state's budget deficit. Meanwhile, Egypt signed a loan agreement worth 45 million Kuwaiti dinars, or $150 million, with the Arab Fund for Economic and Social Development. The money will be used to fund a sewage project in the province of Giza and comes at a time when the economy is in dire need of funding especially since there is a need for new infrastructure to be built and for the renovation of already existing infrastructure. The interest rate on the loan was reduced from 3% to 1%. The loan is scheduled to be paid back in 20 years and its conditions provide for a grace period of 5 years. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined uh, by Dr. Ehsan Yahya to shed more light on uh, this issue. Dr. Yahya, first of all, now the World Bank has agreed to give Egypt $8 billion in total over the coming period. Now, this money is allocated for a lot of infrastructure projects, uh, the private sector also working on the sewage system and the sanitary uh, as well. Do you feel that this is an amount of money that will be used well by the government or do you feel that getting a loan from the World Bank will actually put Egypt in a position that we will have to pay this debt and pay the interest rates which will make things harder on the long run? Uh, actually, no, I don't think it will make things harder on the long run. It, uh, it will make it easier, mm -hmm. especially with the uh, grace period and uh, low interest rate. Uh, and we uh, need in Egypt uh, at this time uh, to uh, uh, um, rebuild the infrastructure and uh, uh, build the, uh, because we had been suffering from disasters in the few years from mm -hmm. uh, damaged infrastructures of Egypt, uh, sewage system, and so on. Mm -hmm. So, 
this uh, um, uh, damage the infrastructures leads to uh, um, uh, corruption of, uh, of worker and work and uh, some factories have been uh, uh, affected by uh, this damage so uh, uh, rebuilding these uh, um, uh, facilities and uh, will allow these workers to be uh, working in a more feasible environment mm -hmm. and uh, will lead to uh, um, uh, more production uh, uh, through this uh, through that years and uh, this will raise the economy and I think that will uh, make Egypt to, uh, um, can uh, uh, pay back the, uh, the loan in uh, a good way without yes. any well the Egyptian government has been talking since actually the 2011 revolution uh, talking about getting the loans from the International Monetary Fund and uh, and it was w worth about 4.8 billion dollars and different governments kept saying no we don't need that loan no we do need that loan and we still didn't really uh, get that loan and we're not sure if we actually want it or not however the World Bank now is actually we signed with the World Bank getting this amount of money. Does this show that Egypt still does need uh, these big sums of money, these big loans? Do you feel that this also shows that world institutions, very important financial institutions such as the World Bank, believes in the economic reform plan that Egypt is undergoing, that they are actually helping uh, in this plan to be implemented? Sure, uh, uh, the, uh, Egypt uh, needs to implement this uh, plan and actually uh, it's the use of the money which makes the World Bank give us the loan. Uh, um, uh, if we are using this money like for uh, food and for uh, um, uh, shelters without mm -hmm. uh, um, building any uh, new facilities and infrastructure, so the money will be gone and we will still be being the same. But using, uh, allocating the money to uh, rebuild uh, the infrastructure of the uh, of the uh, our country mm -hmm. uh, make it uh, easier and it's uh, reforming of our country after a long time of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Yahya, talking about reforming and developing the country, also on the political uh, scene now. Just finished, uh, almost finished, with the third and final step of the uh, political roadmap that was drawn after the June 30th revolution the parliamentary elections. Before we start talking about the prospects uh, for this new parliament, how do you evaluate or how do you see the process of the parliamentary elections that went, went on for the past couple of weeks? Um, actually, uh, um, it's, uh, I think people uh, didn't share as we were hoping to and mm -hmm. uh, this is due to a lack of awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, make us talk with, uh, make us say we really need to have uh, a lot of awareness campaigns from uh, different uh, governmental and non-governmental organizations mm -hmm. because it's uh, the lack of awareness. And if, even uh, I saw some people who are believing in, in uh, reforming, believing in the country and uh, uh, the new future of our country, but they uh, um, they see that as we are the the ignorant people. They see we have uh, elected the president and that's it. And we, now we don't need to go for more elections. So uh, mm -hmm. um, awareness campaign is uh, the key to uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, develop uh, more sharing of the people. But uh, anyway, we already finished the parliamentary elections and now we have the parliament who, uh, who will uh, uh, starting uh, legislation of uh, certain laws and uh, actions uh, yes. toward. Well, we've been going on for a while without a parliament. And do you feel that one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't uh, really storm the, the polling stations and the voting stations is because they already got used to living the life uh, without the political, without the parliament. Uh, you've mentioned that a lot of institutions should do more, and uh, a lot of the, the media outlets as well should do more to inform the people and make them aware of the candidates and their calibers. But do you feel that having a parliament now, even though we haven't been, we've been without a parliament for a while, do you think that it's going to change? the development of the political scene? Do you feel that we are ready now for uh, a parliament or do you think that people will still 
need some time to get used to a new parliament? No, we need the parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, people, people were, were settled down with mm -hmm. what happened, yes. so uh, and they got used to that. But we need the parliament because we, uh, uh, during the previous uh, year and a half, we have uh, certain laws have been uh, uh, up to the world, and we we need to uh, know the people opinions about that, not just by uh, talking or the journals mm -hmm. and uh, um, yes. talk shows. We need uh, uh, parliamentary members who are representative of the people to discuss these laws and the legislation of these laws because uh, if we didn't do that without parliament this is uh, will get us back to the dictatorship and uh, yes. one person make all the laws yes mm -hmm. dr yahya now how do you see the people who actually won the seats of the parliament how do you how do you evaluate the different uh, personalities the different degrees the different uh, backgrounds in the parliament is this something that is satisfactory to you, do you would you have expected a higher caliber of people were you uh, w are you expecting older faces newer faces how do you evaluate the people who actually won the seats in the parliament so far well, it's a diversity of mm -hmm. uh, uh, people, but it's something uh, I do like is that we, we have, I think, 90 or 91 uh, uh, legal uh, uh, lawyer uh, mm -hmm. in this parliament, uh, which we need at this uh, moment mm -hmm. uh, because we are uh, in the form of legislation, certain laws, mm -hmm. so we need that. Uh, anyway, we need uh, uh, a lot of uh, diverse uh, experts in mm -hmm. the parliament. Uh, and um, uh, uh, we have uh, about 80 uh, female in mm -hmm. the parliament and it's uh, uh, a good representation of the women. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, young uh, 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 youth in the parliament. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, up till now uh, uh, the parliament is satisfactory for me for of the diversity of experts in it. And it will be uh, completed by the uh, members that will be uh, the president will uh, assign appoint, yes. uh, appoint to the parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, any lack of ex experts in any areas will be uh, uh, covered uh, by th those persons. So uh, it's satisfactory up till now, and we are waiting to see their discussions and mm -hmm. what we. Okay. And what do you think would be the main uh, laws or the main challenges or obstacles that the parliament will actually uh, start uh, dealing with as soon as they start their session? I think the main obstacle is uh, uh, there is no uh, majority. There will mm -hmm. be uh, fights to agree. There will be no, there will not be ninety percent agreement of mm -hmm. certain laws. So yes. there will be real fights, and it's something good. But it will be new for. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it will be new for all of us because we got used to the parliament that if anything uh, is there for discussion, and we find about ninety percent or more agreed or disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, now we will have a real discussion to. To, uh, to understand what's yes. going on and have something. Yes, and do you, do you, is it clear for you who would uh, form the opposition in the parliament now? Uh, uh, it depends on uh, what is being discussed. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we have uh, a lot of things to be discussed, like the terrorism uh, law, which have been uh, um, uh, there for, for a while, and also um, 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 demonstrations, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of things. So we, we, you can't say who will oppose and who will agree. Uh, it's according to the topic of discussions. We, you will have supporters and non-supporters. Yes. Okay. Well, talking about the parliament now, do you feel one of the main things that the parliament tasked uh, with is actually deciding on whether to keep the the government as it is or actually ask for their resignation now the previous government uh, resigned because because of many different things because of corruption because uh, underperforming in the economic and financial uh, areas as well how do you evaluate the current government do you feel that it is better than the previous one do you feel that it's sort of the same do you feel that economically uh, and financially it's performing better than the previous government 
Uh, it's a little bit uh, regarding the economical part. It's uh, a little bit better than the uh, previous government. It have been taking uh, certain actions uh, mm -hmm. toward uh, youth employment, and uh, there were some um, new projects to, uh, for uh, toward youth employment. So uh, it's performing a little bit better than the previous government, but it's still the first steps. Mm -hmm. So uh, any uh, government needs time to uh, to evaluate it, uh, a complete evaluation of their work. So I think the, the parliament will uh, have to discuss this. It's one of the main topics in the uh, first new, uh, f uh, in the first uh, discussions they will have. Uh, uh, are they going to keep the government or not? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, now also we're joined over the phone by Dr. Ahmad Swan, the political analyst, to shed more light uh, with us. Hello, Dr. Swan, can you hear us? Yes, hi, how are you? I'm very well, sir. Dr. Swan, first of all, uh, recently, uh, the World Bank has reached an agreement to give Egypt a total of $8 billion over the coming period. And this, uh, the $8 billion will be allocated for the private sector. They will also be uh, allocated for the uh, sanitary and the sewage system. A lot of work as well in the infrastructure. How do you see this as a step for the Egyptian government? Do you think that we will be successful in allocating this money in the right places at the right time. Do you feel that we will actually go through a lot of trouble uh, fulfilling and paying off the debts that will be associated to this amount of money? No, I know. I really think we're going to be very successful doing that because we already started a, be a beautiful project all over the country. Uh, you can see the roads, you can see the Suez Canal, you can see a lot of projects started already. And these projects need more finance and this is going to uh, help to complete it and help to, uh, to, to have extra ones and extra ones. And uh, I don't think we're going to be paying off other things with, right, right now. I think we're going to use it for improving the country more and improving the economy more. And having a, a loan uh, like that, it's also good for the uh, limitation of the country internationally. So we can get like that. This way we can get more loans so it's uh, better uh, uh, deals or better uh, uh, ways to use it in uh, the best way for Egypt. Mm -hmm. Dr. Swan, uh, talking also uh, about the new parliament that is being formed, now the president will still allocate uh, and appoint about 28 seats, uh, 28 uh, candidates for uh, the seats in the parliament. On what basis do you think he will... Uh, appoint these people? Do you think that he already has 28 names that he knows will he will appoint? Do you think that he will take a look at all the, the candidates who already won seats and decide to balance things out in terms of expertise or uh, legal uh, backgrounds or uh, youthful and women as well as uh, representation? Yeah, that's a good word, balance things out. I think he will need to balance things out, number one. And number two, he need to see if there is somebody who is, uh, or some people who are needed because of their experience or because of uh, uh, many different things. He should choose somebody like that also. Plus, doing the balance. That's that's the things the way it's going to be. And I am uh, sure this is a very, it's going to be a very good uh, choice. I'm sure of that. Yes. Dr. Ahmad Swan, the political analyst, thank you very much for joining us. Now, Dr. Yahya, uh, earlier uh, the president. Uh, attended a ceremony that was uh, held by the uh, Ministry of Endowments and he was actually uh, because on the occasion of uh, the anniversary of uh, the birth of uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he talked about changing uh, making sure uh, of how to change the uh, religious dialogue and discourse how to uh, actually uh, emphasize the unity uh, in Egypt, religious unity in Egypt, and he talked about how all the Egyptians need to have uh, some sort of a unionship and a solidarity in terms of what they are facing, whether internally and externally. How important do you feel that all these points that were made during the President's speech will actually dictate the future, the, the very near and soon future of the Egyptian government as we are approaching a new year? 
Uh, it's very crucial. It's uh, um, actually we have uh, uh, the president have seen the, ha have uh, said these points before, mm -hmm. and actually we need to to listen to them and to talk about them more and more and uh, stress on them in the media, uh, so that the uh, religious uh, um, uh, people, as a representative of religious and uh, um, uh, even as a the public figures, mm -hmm. uh, they have to put this I these uh, uh, points in mind uh, to uh, affect people and to um, affect people to the right path, uh, mm -hmm. affect people to uh, reform their minds. After we had uh, been listening for a while uh, through uh, people who were uh, extremists mm -hmm. uh, in a way or another. So uh, we have to keep stressing on the unity of the Egyptian people and uh, reforming the uh, religious dialogue uh, towards the West. Yes. Dr. Yahya, now talking uh, about the challenges that are uh, that Egyptians uh, are facing. One of them was the security situation and the security concern, but now it's not just in Egypt, it's international. And they, the war on, uh, on extremists and terrorists all over the world is uh, definitely taking place. Uh, a lot of conflicts, uh, whether in Syria, in Yemen, uh, in Saudi Arabia as well, is involved. What's happening in Europe? Uh, where do you see Egypt within all these different conflicts. Do you feel that Egypt should be taking a much more uh, involving step within these government, uh, within these conflicts? Do you think that Egypt needs to focus more on what's happening uh, inside Egypt now? What do you think? Uh, I think Egypt need to focus on what's happening inside Egypt and they need to focus about back to the awareness campaign we, we have been talking about in the political areas, also in the, the religious and uh, cultural areas, mm -hmm. because uh, we have um, uh, amount of uh, ignorant people. Um, um, uh, we, we, I mean, a, a lot of ignorant, ignorant people, mm -hmm. and they can be easily affected and they can uh, be affected by kindness and uh, nice words and uh, some people are giving them through these nice words and through this kindness uh, extreme ideas, extremist ideas. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to focus on the awareness campaigns and, and the start from small groups to uh, larger areas. So uh, uh, this will um, uh, make Egypt uh, away uh, from uh, other uh, countries like Syria mm -hmm. like uh, other and uh, uh, then we can focus on other uh, uh, yes. countries mm -hmm. right now we have to be focused from inside and from small scale to larger scale yes well we've been waging a war against terrorism uh, especially in the Sinai Peninsula how far do you feel that uh, we've come through that uh, do you feel that we are progressing do you think that we're progressing slowly but surely do you think that we 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 took a large, long strides uh, in terms of actually uh, our war on terror in the Sinai Peninsula in specific? I think we are progress progressing slowly, mm -hmm. uh, although uh, you can think, uh, if you have the uh, whole visions, you think that we have gone, gone far, but actually there is, um, uh, what you say, remnants, silence, mm -hmm. uh, voice, they, they cannot, uh, they, they are waiting for uh, uh, opportunities to come up back and so uh, we have to focus and work hard again. Yes. Well talking about working hard, uh, the government has been undergoing a lot of uh, mega projects. Started off with the uh, expansion of the Suez Canal, we, uh, we held this uh, economic conference in Sharm el-Sheikh. Uh, also we, uh, we're actually working on investing in uh, around 500 for dance, for, uh, for new housing for the youth and agricultural projects. And they can all be uh, categorized as the mega projects. Now, talking about the mega projects, there are two points of view. A lot of people are saying, no, Egypt needs to get into a, a lot of major, mega projects in order to just get all the people behind one aim or at least a few big goals, a few big achievements to uh, look forward to. And at the same time, a lot of people are saying, well, no, it's not just the mega projects. So you need to focus on the private sector. You need to focus on the infrastructure, the, uh, the education, the uh, health file. 
what do you think? Do you think that this is the time now for a lot of mega projects, or do you feel that it is the time now to focus on uh, the employment, the, uh, the, the small and medium-sized uh, investments and businesses? Uh, why not be working on both? I mm -hmm. We can work in mega project and uh, be focusing in education and health, and especially education. Education, uh, as you see uh, during our talk, I have mentioned a lot the, uh, the awareness campaigns, mm -hmm. and this could be, can, can be also done by private sectors. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, with private sectors, I don't just mean the political parties, yes. um, um, uh, the big uh, industries. Uh, um, they can have uh, um, they can have uh, um, awareness sessions. Uh, they uh, there is in service education during uh, at uh, any big facilities, uh, education is about uh, sales, about difference, and they can have uh, have this because um, uh, it will not just affect the uh, country, it also will affect this private sector, mm -hmm. because uh, um, uh, even in the private sectors, uh, you can uh, suddenly find a uh, few extremists or a few people are working against the main uh, aim or the main uh, mission of, the, uh, of this uh, um, industry, whatever. Field. Mm -hmm. So we can be working uh, in the two uh, areas, in the mega projects and also uh, education and uh, health with the help of the private sector. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the uh, main sectors and industries also that underwent a lot, uh, a lot of changes and developments also got knocked down uh, quite a few times affected by the security and safety situation in Egypt over the past few years was the tourism industry. Now let's check out this report regarding the Egypt Tourist Authority launching a campaign to attract the Arab and foreign tourists back to Egypt and we'll be right back. The Egypt Tourism Authority ETA has unveiled a new campaign entitled This is Egypt to launch a major regional campaign to drive growth in the tourism sector. In a change from previous campaigns, This is Egypt will be digitally led, focusing on peer-to-peer -peer advocacy and underpinned by digital media spent, whilst traditional advertising methods will form a secondary promotional level. Targeting the Arab traveler from the Middle East region, the campaign will harness the power of digital media in a region where internet penetration is 5.8% higher at 48.1% than the world average and social media sites such as Facebook play a significant role in 88% of internet users' daily lives. The hashtag This is Egypt campaign is a powerful movement which will resonate with the wider region as it was created initially by Egyptian people themselves. Minister of Tourism Hisham Zazwa said Egypt is at a pivotal point in terms of tourism development in the country and the new campaign and branding demonstrates its commitment in attracting travelers from sister Arab countries to discover the beautiful Egypt. The campaign focuses on personalizing Egyptian experience by encouraging wider Arab audiences to consider the variety of holidays which can be enjoyed in the country from a vibrant city break in Alexandria or Cairo to luxury beach gateways in Urgada or Sharm el Sheikh. The campaign will highlight past times which particularly resonate with an Arabic audience from shopping and dining to enjoying luxury accommodation and an exciting nightlife. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Yahya, now the tourism industry uh, has been affected definitely by what's been uh, going on in Egypt over the past few years. Now the Ministry of Tourism has launched this campaign, This is Egypt, uh, in order to try and attract uh, and strengthen and freshen up the tourism industry here, attracting Arab and foreign uh, tourists to Egypt, also trying to um, really revive the domestic tourism by Egyptians throughout the country. How much do you feel uh, the ministry will be successful in actually uh, restoring the confidence uh, of the tourists by boosting uh, these uh, campaigns and trying to actually attract these people. 
I think to boost these campaigns, we need to focus on the youth, and uh, there, are the, there is a, a beautiful experience of a, a group of uh, youth. Uh, it's uh, Cairo Runners. It's uh, a group of uh, young people. Uh, actually, young. It, it's diverse ages. Uh, they are running across Cairo every Friday mm -hmm. um, from five ki kilometer to eight. And they mm -hmm. recently they have been doing uh, uh, a lot of effort to. Uh, um, uh, 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 nourish the uh, tourism. Uh, they have been doing a run in, uh, um, in front of the pyramids, uh, like mm -hmm. I think a month or so. Uh, um, uh, a week or two weeks ago, they have been doing a run in Luxor. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, they, their photos have been gone viral. We, we have mm -hmm. been talking in the report about the social media and the f Facebook. And actually, it's in, mm -hmm. uh, even the um, uh, foreign uh, media have been uh, uh, showing their photos. They are uh, while they are running and having mm -hmm. fun. So um, uh, I think if the government have been uh, have um, uh, cooperated with uh, uh, youth who have been doing this in. Uh, 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 because of their love to their country and uh, it also shows uh, how uh, civilized they are and they are caring about uh, uh, health and uh, um, sport, uh, uh, it will help. Uh, this, this is side by side by uh, um, the different uh, media uh, announcement about uh, the, and the uh, encouragement of domestic uh, tourism. Yes. Well, what about other than using the social media and using the media to attract a lot of people, let's suppose, uh, let's assume that some people saw all these uh, campaigns and all these and they thought of, well, why don't we go to Egypt? Now, after taking that initial step, what is being done by the Ministry of Tourism to actually facilitate services and provide all the uh, all the needs for the domestic and uh, the foreign tourists in Egypt do you feel that there still needs a lot of work to be done by the Ministry of Tourism ju not just spreading the word of uh, this is Egypt and coming to Egypt do you feel that there is still a lot of work or it's is it just a matter of encouraging uh, the people to make them feel safe, it's it's uh, it's good to uh, come to Egypt and visit. Sure, it needs a lot of work. It needs mm -hmm. a, a, a huge effort, actually, uh, okay, uh, and a huge effort with uh, uh, people. Uh, we are encouraging the domestic tourism, so we we have to encourage these people how to deal with foreigners and uh, how to because we, it's not the, the the idea is not to get the foreigners here and they uh, see what they don't don't like. Mm -hmm. uh, they they have to see the hospitality of the Egyptian uh, uh, great facilities and uh, um, uh, they have to find what they need. It's not mm -hmm. just to get them here and then they go and say we don't want to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, safety and hospitality and uh, civilization and um, uh, a lot of things combined together. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're now joined over the phone by Mr. Mohammed Sabrin, the journalist at Al Ahrab newspaper. Hello, Mr. Sabrin, can you hear us? Hello, how are you? I'm very well, sir. Mr. Sabrin, uh, first of all, how do, you, uh, how do you evaluate the efforts that's, uh, that are being exerted by the Ministry of Tourism in order to, uh, and the campaigns in order to uh, revive the tourism industry here in Egypt and attract foreign tourists coming to Egypt and also revive the uh, domestic tourism here? You know, I think, you know, uh we still uh, need to, to, to uh, intensify, uh, concentrate in our effort and do a little bit more regarding, you know, that uh, the last four years we didn't do enough efforts uh, to, uh, you know, to increase uh, the awareness of, uh, you know, the products of uh, tourism in Egypt. And I think we, we have uh, to to emphasize in, in uh, new markets beyond the traditional markets in Russia and, and, and Europe. We don't do enough efforts in Latin America or in, in America, North America. We don't uh, do a lot of efforts regarding, you know, uh, uh, different uh, types of tourism, like, you know, uh, conferences, like environment uh, tourism, 
like you know yeah tourism like you know the up market uh, tourism we always uh, concentrating on uh, on uh, a very uh, traditional markets and uh, there is another thing which is very important which is you know shopping uh, tourism we don't uh, emphasize that there is a lot of uh, products very cheap and very good uh, manufactured uh, products in Egypt uh, and uh, we don't have in the calendar of international uh, arena we don't have uh, uh, a lot of festivals a lot of you know uh, events uh, in Egypt yes so we still we still uh, very far from uh, achieving you know our right uh, uh, portion of, of the international market uh, of uh, tourism yes mr sabreen now uh, just going back uh, a little earlier to what we were discussing uh, in the first segment. Now, the World Bank actually gave uh, e the Egyptian government uh, a total of $8 billion over the next uh, period. How do you feel, and, and it should be allocated to a lot of infrastructure uh, projects such as the uh, sanitary and sewage system, also encouraging and freshening up the uh, private sector here in Egypt. Is this good news uh, for Egypt? Is this seen as one of the main uh, institutions giving, financial institutions, lending Egypt the money, believing in the economic reform process? You know, uh, the most important things, if, if we uh, emphasize not only in, in the international bank, but it, it seems to me that most of the international and, you know, uh, regional uh, uh, you know uh, institution uh, do have uh, a lot of confidence in the Egyptian economy and a lot of confidence regarding uh, the overall situation in Egypt that Egypt is uh, is more stable that Egypt is 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 moving very uh, uh, you know very uh, steady to be a very normal uh, country and, and very normal society so I think that in, in this regard, we have to remember that which company uh, did, uh, uh, you know, a certificate of confidence in, in the Egyptian economy. Mr. So Hamas, we have to, yes, go ahead. Yeah, so we have to, to, to take it in, in this contest. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Mr. Mohammed Sabrin, okay. the journalist at Al Lahram newspaper, thank you very much for joining us. Now, Dr. Yahya, talking uh, again about the tourism industry, we are trying and uh, to attract a lot of uh, foreign tourists coming to Egypt and really work on Egyptians uh, traveling domestically. But also, one of the main issues is that a lot of Egyptians are saying, well, no, we want to travel around, we want to go to Luxor, we want to go to Sinai and the, uh, the cities there, and we want to travel all over uh, the country to the uh, western desert as well. But everyone's actually complaining about the uh, the prices. Even they were talking about the prices of plane tickets, and they were talking about the prices for the uh, accommodations. And it's really there are two points of view. A lot of people are saying, "Well, no. If you want to revive the economy and the tourism industry, you need to lower the prices. People would be encouraged to go." At the same time, people who are working within the tourism. Uh, industry they need to make a living and since the tourism industry is not as healthy as it was uh, people need to keep the prices uh, higher than the usual well actually the prices have been low uh, mm -hmm. if, you, if you have seen uh, the, uh, a lot of uh, traveling agencies right now you will find the uh, prices for uh, places like Sharm Sheikh, uh, Arda, uh, Luxor and Aswan mm -hmm. uh, now is uh, about one third than previous years mm -hmm. it's it's the, the, the prices are actually low and uh, um, actually we know it's it is a uh, people who are working in tourism are losing by this way but they gaining on mm -hmm. the long run mm -hmm. so the prices now we can i don't think we can complain about the prices because actually have it have been lowered and i don't think it could it could be lowered than that it's uh, it's actually um, uh, 
covering the expenses yes. and mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, just uh, encouraging people for this uh, domestic. Uh, still, some places have higher prices, mm -hmm. uh, but um, people go there too. I think we we, we should uh, we are encouraging people with uh, 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 moderate economic status to go for mm -hmm. tourism and we have the higher uh, uh, levels and higher expenses for people who can pay. Yes. So. Well, uh, Minister of Tourism uh, Hisham Zazoa actually uh, signed on Tuesday uh, or announced on Tuesday uh, an agreement and a deal that is uh, with the British Consultancy Control Risks uh, Company which works on uh, making sure the safety and security regulations in the airports are up to standards, up to international standards. It will be mainly implemented in the Cairo airport, also the Sharm el -Sheikh airport. How much of a step uh, do you think this is important in reviving the tourism industry, encouraging the tourists to actually travel uh, from all over the world coming to Egypt, encouraging Egyptians to use the airplanes as well, especially after the uh, the crash of the Russian airliner a while ago. It's a great step and it uh, will uh, satisfy uh, foreigners from out Egypt, from outside Egypt and uh, it will make Egyptians also feeling safe, uh, um, um, especially after uh, previous uh, incidents mm -hmm. uh, of Russian airplane, as you mentioned. Well, it's it's a great step, and uh, um, uh, it, we need it at this time. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, the security situation has always been a concern for uh, tourists traveling and coming to Egypt. How far do you think we have uh, gone in uh, in actually containing or actually having a, some sort of a stable uh, and safe uh, security situation? I think we have uh, uh, gone, gone so far and uh, uh, it's uh, stable and uh, uh, secure right now and we, we, we have uh, a, a lot of security in different areas we can see that. Uh, I have seen it myself, I have seen it from uh, friends and colleagues uh, have been telling me uh, it's uh, better than, uh, than before, you can mm -hmm. find the security around you whenever you, you need it. So uh, the government uh, d did really a great effort in this uh, field and it did well. Yes. Well, how long do you think that we will have to wait to see the effects and the fruits of uh, these efforts and these uh, campaigns encouraging uh, tourism industry here in Egypt? Now, we understand that it's tourism industry and the tourism sector is one of the main sources of foreign currency in Egypt. It was the main source along with the Suez Canal. How far do you think we will have, how long do you think we will have to wait actually to see the fruit of these campaigns? Uh, I think we have to be patient uh, from one to two years to uh, really harvest the fruit of, uh, of this uh, great effort and uh, never lose hope and continue with the same steps, with the same effort uh, uh, because uh, people always have perception uh, um, about security and the insecurities and this perception to change, it needs time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it needs a lot of opinions and a lot of uh, blogs and talks from others so uh, mm -hmm. one to two years yes definitely well ladies and gentlemen a lot of developments taking place uh, here in the uh, uh, actually uh, yes these are the uh, these are the main developments that have been taking place over the uh, over the past year through the economic and political ones still the year is not over still we are waiting for the first session that will be held by the new egyptian parliament unfortunately that's all the time we have for this edition of the daily debate but before we go i'd like to thank our very distinguished guest dr Hassan yahya member of the high institute of legal and political studies and the political analyst dr yahya thank you very much for joining us thank you ladies and gentlemen please stay tuned for more coming up on al international i'm Haney Saif. thank you for joining us